Welcome to this series, Understanding the Scholarly Article. This is part one, what is a scholarly article? During your studies at the University of Winnipeg, all of your instructors, your professors will be asking for what's called academic or scholarly or peer reviewed literature. And there's often confusion about what this means. In this video, we will be explaining what makes a scholarly article different from other kinds of articles that you may see in magazines. We'll be explaining what is meant by peer review, and we'll be talking about why it's important for you to have articles like this in your papers. First of all, the purpose of academic research is generally to test theories and hypotheses and not to prove anything. In mathematics, they will talk about proofs, but in the sciences, scientists test theories and hypotheses. Nothing is ever settled. Science is always part of a process of discovery and adding on to knowledge and correcting knowledge. So nothing is ever final. In the social sciences as well, and in the humanities, scholars are all about testing assumptions, exploring ideas, but never having the last word. Scholarly articles can generate new knowledge. These are called empirical studies. So any study where they are gathering data, whether it's through surveys or interviews or some sort of a scientific experiment where a test is being done, that is called empirical, as opposed to a purely theoretical paper where the authors are simply discussing ideas. But a scholarly article can also confirm or refute previous findings by simply reproducing what has been done in a previous study. The method section of a paper should be thorough enough so that any researcher in the field can do that study again to see if they get the same, similar, or different findings. And that is a completely legitimate form of scholarly research. Scholarly articles can also review the state of current knowledge in a field. These are called literature reviews or systematic literature reviews, where all the author or authors do is read everything they can find on that topic within a certain time frame, summarize those articles and compare and contrast them to develop what is the state of knowledge in our field. Scholarly articles can also offer new interpretations of theory, ideas, and concepts. So no experiment is required. It's simply a discussion of ideas. But whatever kind of scholarly article we're dealing with, they're all part of what's called the scholarly conversation between scholars, instructors, and students. As a student, you too are part of the scholarly conversation. Let's just compare for a moment a scholarly article versus a magazine that you might find at a bookstore. A commercial magazine has a premium placed on visual appeal. They're often very slickly designed and attractive so that they jump out from the newsstand. But a peer-reviewed journal, the premium is placed on text. There may be few or no illustrations or images. A commercial magazine may come out once a week or once a month. But a peer-reviewed journal will come out maybe one to four times a year. The, the commercial magazine will be widely available in stores, but a peer-reviewed journal is really only available through a subscription or a membership in a scholarly society, where the commercial magazine is supported and paid for by advertising. The peer-reviewed journal is supported by subscriptions or grants or memberships to those scholarly societies. The commercial magazine can publish journalism, reportage, news, and opinion. But the peer-reviewed journal publishes peer-reviewed scholarly academic research, and also things like book reviews or opinion pieces. So just be aware that not everything in a peer-reviewed journal will actually be peer-reviewed, and we'll explain that in a minute. But the difference then between these two forms of publication is that the commercial magazine is really that first version of history, news reporting, current events, 
in many cases. And there may be a place for that kind of literature in your paper, but every assignment that you will have, mostly you are going to be needing to cite peer-reviewed sources. And because peer-reviewed journals take so long to go through that peer review process that the journals only come out one to four times a year, if there is a current event that's going on right now that you see reported in a commercial magazine, there may not be articles about that event for another year or more in a peer-reviewed journal. So commercial magazine articles then are intended to inform or entertain through reportage or opinion, but the scholarly articles are built on conceptual frameworks or theory. And we're going to be talking about theory more in the third part of this series. So first of all, what then is peer review? This is part of the scholarly conversation because articles that are submitted to journals are then sent out by the editors to scholars who have previously published on that topic or theme before. Every professor or instructor at the University of Winnipeg has had their work peer reviewed or has reviewed the works of others. It's part of what's called a double blind process. The authors of the articles don't know who is reviewing the articles and the reviewers don't or shouldn't know who wrote the articles. Sometimes a scholarly community is small enough so that the authors might be able to guess who might be reviewing, the reviewers may be able to guess who the author is, but technically they shouldn't know. But the reviewers recommend comments, changes, revisions to the article, or they may reject it. They may de determine that the authors haven't really done sufficient work uh, on their research and need to start over again. It results in more polished publications because once an article has passed through peer review, it means that there is support and credibility being lent to the findings by other scholars in the field. But again, a caution that not all articles in a scholarly journal are peer reviewed. Book reviews, for example, do not go through the peer review process. They will be lightly edited for typographical errors, but that's pretty much it. In summary then, scholarly sources are required for your own essays and papers at the university because they are more reputable than articles that you will find in magazines or on the open web. Peer review is a fundamental part of why these articles are so reputable because they have gone through a process in which they are read and commented on by scholars in the field. But not all articles in a peer-reviewed journal will be peer-reviewed. The findings in these papers do contribute to other research that, they will, that these articles will be cited for years to come, and therefore they are part of the scholarly conversation. But what sets these articles apart from commercial articles in magazines or things you will find on websites is that they are framed in terms of certain types of theory or conceptual frameworks, which we will be discussing in part three of this series. These articles also cite their sources, and as a researcher, you can follow up on those sources. You can look up those books and articles in our catalog and make use of them yourself. These articles also then follow a fairly formal structure, which we will be exploring in part two of this series, the structure of a scholarly article.